Hello and welcome to another episode of Workshop Wednesday. In today's video, we are going to be talking about our new Vivo DRO digital readout system that we've installed on our Cincinnati Toolmaster 1C mill. Now it's been a while since one of these Workshop Wednesday videos actually focused on a machine tool like the mill, uh, but here we are back with it. And uh, it's been a while since we actually bought our DRO. We first bought this about 18 months ago and then spent time pondering about how we were going to do it and set it up. But we'll talk about the installation in a minute. Now it's been so long since we bought this uh, DRO Vivor, the maker of R1, has actually stopped making them, which is a shame because we've learned so much about DRO heads and scales and all of the functions on this that we would actually quite like to put some on our other machine tools, but unfortunately we'll now have to find a different company to get them from for those. On the digital readout system that we bought, we have optical scales rather than magnetic scales, uh, which means two things. These scales, because they're optical scales, are larger. Uh, they are a bit less robust than magnetic scales. But the other thing is that optical scales are a lot cheaper than magnetic scales. And for our first DRO, we wanted to go relatively cheap uh, with it. And on a big mill like this, it doesn't necessarily matter that these scales are so large. Um, whereas if you had a small machine, you may want uh, the smaller magnetic scales so that they don't get in the way. Now, we said before about how the installation of the DRO took quite a while, and part of that was finding mounting points for each scale, because you have to find a mounting point for the scale itself and also the reader, and one part has to be stationary, one has to move, and because there's a lot of curves on this mill and not a lot, a lot of mounting points, that meant making up all of our own brackets for mounting and also drilling into the mill in certain places to make mounting points, which we weren't especially happy about doing. But as some of the YouTube videos that we watched uh, highlighted, there's not really any other way about it. So let's quickly go through the scales. Probably the easiest one to install was this one. This is the Y axis. And you can see if I move this, that the scale uh, is mobile and the reader is stationary on there. This was probably the easiest one because we've got some flat surfaces uh, to mount things to, which meant just making straight brackets that bolt onto those holes. And if I move this, you can see the Y changing on the display here. That's the most basic bit of the DRO is just watching the scales move on there. Now we're going on to the x-axis, which I think is our longest scale, which is at the back of the bed here. And uh, on this one, again, the reader is stationary and the scale is mobile. The scale is under all of these guards to protect it from uh, chips and lubricants. Now, this was difficult because you've got the lubricant drain tray here which we had to kind of go around with brackets, but there's a 90 degree bracket here going underneath, and then this bracket here. Now, our other mill, our Centec mill, came in quite handy for making up all of these brackets and stuff. Uh, otherwise, it would be a bit awkward trying to mount things to this mill and using it for the parts. Now, me and Dad will just switch places to show you the Z axis, which is the up and down one. Now, this was probably the most difficult one uh, fit, fitment wise because while there's a flat part there to mount to around the uh, around the back you've got this curved part here which the reader mounts to on that uh, funny angled bracket which was quite difficult to measure and make but now that we've done that we're happy with how that works and with everything set up we're very happy that we did go through 
all of the work to mount everything to it. And if I just demonstrate, uh, you can see the Z moving there as I move it up and down and also the X too. Now in this video, we won't be doing a how to use a DRO video because there's a million different great videos on how to do that, many of which we used uh, to learn how to use our DRO. So instead, we'll be doing more of a video talking about the benefits of the DRO, why we got one, and what we'll mainly be using it for and demonstrating a couple of the functions that we'll be using it for. Now, starting off with uh, why we wanted to get one of these. First thing really is accuracy, because you're marking out when you're about to mill something, can only be as good as it is, and it's never going to be 100% accurate all of the time. And then there's the scales on uh, these parts of the mill. Now, they may be accurate, but when you've got a bit of floating uh, the controls like that, where you turn it and it doesn't actually move the bed, you can see I'm moving that control and it's not moving the bed according to the DRO. Or it is minorly, but there's quite a big distance where it's not. So the scales aren't 100% accurate because they don't measure the bed travel, whereas the scales on the DRO do. So that makes it a lot more accurate for machining. We've just put a drill and a piece of scrap aluminium in the vise here so that we can demonstrate to you some of the features and we'll start off with something simple. As you can see at the moment, uh, this is in incremental mode, uh, which effectively on your DRA, you have two different work planes, incremental and absolute. And on the absolute one, you usually set it to either the corner of your workpiece, uh, such as this bit of aluminium, or what we did with our absolute scales, which is uh, set it set the zero on them to the extremes of each axis, which is fully to the left on the X, fully out on the Y and fully down on the Z. And then uh, obviously they're quite big measurements. So if we switch that back to incremental for now, and what we've actually done is set the corner of our workpiece uh, as zero, zero on the X and Y on the incremental instead because we're using the absolute for some other work that we're doing and we don't want to disrupt that too much. So say I simply wanted to drill a hole uh, two centimetres out from the edge on both edges, so that was about there. What we can do here is go, because this is on millimetres, can take these until the X and Y are down to 20, now, it's very difficult to get it exact, as you're about to see. Maybe not, that one I did quite quickly. And then this one I have a feeling is going to be slightly more difficult. As you can tell, it is difficult to get it spot on, uh, but sometimes 0 0.05 is all right uh, discrepancy. And then I'm not going to drill a hole, but if we measure here to the center of the drill, you can see that is two centimeters to the center. And again, two centimeters to the center. So it's very accurate and didn't have to do any marking out whatsoever. Enough of the talking now, let's show you something. And we're going to show you a couple of the functions uh, that we think are going to be most useful for us, which is the half function and the linear drilling function and first I'll show you the linear drilling function and as uh, the symbol and the name suggests it allows you to evenly space holes across a straight line and that can be at whatever angle you like and I'll just show you how to set this up we've got our first position ready and that's what you need to do before you actually enter into this mode is get the start position where you want your first hole because that's what the computer assumes will be hole number one's position. Now, if we press the button here, you can see it says line X, Y. The other options are Y, Z and X, Z. They're the different orientations of the planes. A bit like if you've looked at some CAD softwares, they'll have three work planes uh, comparing different axes, but we're working on X, Y. 
Now it says line S, which means line step, or the other option is line L, which is line length. And this is effectively asking you how you want to enter your data for how you're going to do the whole. Line step is giving information about the distances between the holes and how many holes you want, rather than line length does it on the whole line length and then works out the distance between them for you. So very useful depending on what information you have, but we prefer to do line step. So if we enter this, it's then asking us how big we want to make our step. This is in millimetres, so 20 millimetres looks all right for our line steps on this bit. Then it's asking you what angle you want to do. Now we just want a straight horizontal line, so we're going to go with zero angle, so that it's perpendicular with the edge uh, of the metal. Sorry, parallel with the edge of the metal, not perpendicular. Um, and you can set that to whatever angle you wanted to do if you were doing this at home and then you'd have a line at a different angle. So press enter on that and then it's asking you how many holes you want. We want three holes, not eight. So if we then enter from there, it is ready to start uh, the process. So we have hole number one position, obviously, as we said before, zero, zero, which means we're in the point uh, where it thinks the first hole should be. Then, as we go through them, we press uh, the up arrow, oh, sorry, the down arrow to go through them. That's hole number two, says the position, and hole number three. So we go back to hole number one, we'll drill this hole, and then we'll go along the line and demonstrate the other holes for you. See there, we didn't go fully in, but uh, it shows where the position should be. We go to number two, and you can see we need to move 20. So I do that now. Five, four, three, two, one. And again, difficult to get it exactly zero, but we'll try and get it as close as possible. There we go. And now, we make another hole here. And with that one done, then we can move on to hole number three. You can see the distance that we have to go again move that along. Again, no marking out or measurements having to be taken uh, from us between holes, which is uh, what makes the DRO a lot easier to use than just marking out. Now we do it. final hole here. Now with that done, I'm just going to move drill out of the way. And then if I just roughly measure between them, you can see from one end uh, of one to the, so the left hand side of one hole to the left hand side of the next hole, that's two centimeters. And same on the next one. So perfectly accurate. And you can see they look uniform and in line. And then the last thing to do is simply cancel this, uh, which you do by pressing the function button again, and we're back to where we were before. Now the other function we wanted to demonstrate, which is the half function, which is for finding the center point of two 
areas on your workpiece and then you can make center lines and all the rest of it. So as we said before, we set that corner to zero, zero, which means this whole edge is zero on the x-axis. Now to save time, we went to the other edge and used an edge finder uh, to find the distance across. And at this side, it was 88, uh, which means that's the whole distance across. Now we want to drill a hole in the center of those two edges. So what we're going to do is select the x-axis and then press half. That's then halved our value, which obviously 88 halved is just 44, gives a nice number. But if you had something a bit more messy, then it would still half it and save you the pain of trying to half it in your head. And then what we can do now is go along to zero on our x-axis. And when we reach zero, that will be uh, the center point between the two parts or the two points where we've measured. There we go, zero. So now if we drill a hole here. rule here and if we measure that you can see 88 across and to the center of the line is pretty much 44 so that is accurately in the center there are quite a lot of other functions uh, notably this one which is for doing equally spaced holes in a circle and the one next to it which is for doing the same thing but on an arc and I'm sure they'll be very handy uh, as well as all of the other tools that come on one of these DROs uh, that we don't even know how to use yet. We've only just begun uh, to get used to using it. But please do let us know of your thoughts on our DRO in the comments section down below. And I hope you've enjoyed uh, learning about the installation of it and also a quick demonstration of some of the functions. But that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode of Workshop Wednesday. Bye.